Ten years, man. <sighs> it's been a long time. It's Does crazy. it feel like ten years? Yeah, but in a good way. Does it feel like twenty years? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Um, it's you know we've talked about this like this time pass quicker as you get older. For me, I feel like this yeah. has been a really long, awesome, fun journey. I've been able to enjoy every part of this, uh, but obviously GSL is my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have a couple years in there blacked out, but overall it's been, <laughs> <laughs> it's been fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and start this thing. All right. My name is Nick Plott. Uh, I'm an American from Kansas, and uh, my ID is Tasteless, and I am a StarCraft One and StarCraft II caster in South Korea in Seoul. Someone made this. We have a couple gifts. I think I got more over here, actually, too. But, uh... Yeah, sometimes fans come and give us something, so this is one of them, this shirt here. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> I moved out to Korea because I had a job opportunity at a TV station called Arirang TV, and I was doing a show that was, it was literally called uh, Esports, was the name of the show. And what they would do is they would buy old, like OSL or MSL, uh, VODs, and then I would cast over the old VOD. Uh, while that was going on, I ended up getting connected with a producer at GOM TV, and they were looking for possibly having English commentary for uh, the GOM TV Avertech Intel Classic. And so I did that for a little while, um, and then that show got canceled, and I had no money, and I was basically waiting and hoping that StarCraft II would come out because um, I was pretty sure if StarCraft 2 comes out, I'll be able to do some kind of a show with that. Um, but the day the beta came out, uh, that's when I knew I got a new start. Uh, we talked to GOM TV then, uh, again, because they wanted to do a new show, which is GSL. And uh, yeah, here we, here we are, it's been 10 years. 처음에 이제 닉을 본 거는 곰 TV 클래식 스타크래프트 1 대회였었는데 곰 TV에서 하던 스타크래프트 1 대회를 글로벌 팬들한테 중계를 시작을 했는데 거기에 닉이 이제 혼자 와서 중계를 하고 있었어요. 그래서 와 스타크래프트를 이거 외국에서도 이렇게 많은 사람들이 볼수 있게 영어 중계를 하네라고 되게 신선했었고 어 외국에서 누가 혼자 와서 저렇게 영어 중계를 여기서 한국에서 열심히 하고 있네. 그래서 되게 신기하고 열정적이다라고 생각을 하면서 쳐다보고 있었어요. 그래서 어, 외국에서 스타크래프트 많이 보는구나. 그래서 잘 모를 때였으니까 글로벌에 대해서 되게 신기하다고 생각하고 있었어요. and we only lost by one map at the end of the day against the Koreans. So this was a really fun event. And uh, at the end of it, GSL gave me this nice photo. So uh, I like that one. I always have that one out. Well, this is like kind of an old one. This is like the one I'm using right now, where it's like I take notes on my games every day and what I'm working on and, right? Uh, so I have whiteboards actually all around and papers like taped up on the walls. Uh, I just think a lot about StarCraft and I'm always trying to get better and understand the game more. Uh, so I make notes, I just kind of walk around and think and, and write things down and then when I'm playing I can just kind of turn my head and take a look and remember all the things I'm thinking about. So I first started casting GSL, I was already out here. Uh, I was actually working for IEG at the time, that later became Spo TV, casting some other stuff. Uh, but Tasis and I were friends, and uh, GSL was not announced yet, but he knew about it. So he brought me down for a meeting with the original people down at GOM TV, uh, and just said, hey, this is the other caster that's out here. Uh, and I had a meeting with them, and we talked it out, and you know, there wasn't a lot to choose from, so I got the job. I first met Deni at a cafe, and I was very happy to be a I was very happy to be a StarCraft Nick 
글로벌 팬들한테 우리 GSL을 알리게 돼서 너무 잘한 결정이었다고 생각합니다. But this could be the end and GG! GG, unbelievable series! Stats has done it! And Sue for the fifth time! You know, the reason that I moved to Korea is because this is where StarCraft is, is big. This is the one place where I could move to and have StarCraft be my job, whether that was through being a commentator or a professional gamer or something else involved with StarCraft. So that's why I came here, but there's a lot of reasons why I've stayed. It's just, it's a wonderful country. Uh, it's really safe. Everyone's so friendly, delicious food. Uh, I just love it here. I have so many happy memories living in Korea. I think it's important to remember I'm a kid from a suburb in Kansas. Um, uh, it's a very, very uh, small place in comparison to Seoul. So I think for me, it was the shock of being in a huge city and it felt like Seoul was endless and that I'd never be able to learn where to go or how to communicate. And now I feel like this is my home. I feel like I know every corner of the city and I'm very comfortable here. 미국의 코로나가 생황이 아직도 안 좋아서 음, 여행 가면 안 돼요. Pretty good. 맥주 하나 주세요. 맥주 하나 더 주세요. Yeah. See, do I have that string somewhere? This one. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa. Go ahead, control two. All right, now let's bring them over and get ready to attack, okay? 1A, 2A. Remember, press A, or you can hit control in one. Put them on our feet. Uh, Arya's control. improving really quickly at games overall. Mm -hmm. She's, it's really amazing to watch your kids start playing video games because at first uh, they are, they don't really know what they're doing and you're like, oh, you keep walking off a cliff or something like that. Uh, but, you know, it, they just, they jump up like exponentially really quick at, at how good that they are. And at this point, like, if she sits down with any game that she plays a lot, uh, she's getting quite good. <laughs> Come on, yo. Uh, yeah, things have changed a lot, having a family. Uh, before I had my wife and kids, uh, pretty much every moment uh, of my day was, was kind of devoted to StarCraft, whether it was, you know, watching it or playing it or thinking about it. Uh, but at this point now, I, I have a nice big family, you know, I have four kids and a wife, and um, so that takes up a lot of time, for sure. But my passion hasn't really changed. So in all of my free time, it's still StarCraft. In all of my work time, it's still StarCraft. Uh, so my feelings for StarCraft haven't really changed. I just, I have uh, way more responsibilities now. What we'll probably do is cross up here. I don't know. <laughs> Cheers, casters. He wasn't oh, there with broken I, puppet I, I, legs, I, I, just I'm screaming. <laughs> Whether it's a really serious situation in a game where something has changed suddenly, but also sometimes when it's a boring situation in a game where something funny is happening, Nick's able to make humor out of that. And I think it just is able to read any situation, but it's the most exciting hype moment that you'll ever see in the Grand Finals. He's going to yell about it, he's going to be excited about it. It's a really boring moment. He's going to make it entertaining, right? And I think that he makes Dan laugh a lot, and there's a really good chemistry between the two of them because he's funny and because he pushes Dan to those the laughter moments. I think that's why the fans really enjoy the show, whether it's a good game or not. The Nick and Dan casting is always kind of a funny and humorous thing, I think, for a lot of people. A lot of people just tune in just to hear you guys talk, honestly. You guys actually listen to each other. There's a lot of commentators, even at the, you know, at the top, and I think we've all been, at one point or another, uh, I guess, we've made the mistake, and that is, like, we stop listening as internally. And I think you and Dan are constantly having a conversation with each other, rather than like, my turn to talk, my turn to talk. And you're, you're both like super knowledgeable, knowledgeable about the game, right? And 
active listening is something that a lot of commentators don't realize is extraordinarily important, even though it should be obvious, right? You're able to listen to each other and bounce off each other, and that's how you form that chemistry in, in the first place. I'm so uncomfortable with him saying this. I, I'm so uncomfortable with this, where like I sit here and you guys all say nice stuff, and I'm like, ah! 10 years of GSL, here's to 10 more. Yeah. Unbelievable series! Uh, when I first met Nick, or Tasteless, uh, it was 2005. Uh, he had made it to the USA Finals for WCG, and I liked him uh, right off the bat. You know, he was one of the more social players. Uh, so we got along pretty well because I was a bit more social than most of the players as well. So uh, I liked him. He was a nice guy. He seemed cool. Uh, I first met Dan on Battle.net uh, like we all did. There weren't many live tournaments in the United States. And so he was one of the good players that you wanted to try to get a game against. And I think the first time I met him was also the same time I first cast him. So that would be 2005. We were all really young back then. Nick means a lot to me. You know, we've gone through absolutely everything together. We've been so close uh, for, you know, since, since we both got to Korea more than 12 years ago now. Um, we've been best friends and partners and working and everything. Uh, we've been through all the ups together and all the downs together. And I think we've made each other a lot better than we ever could be alone. Uh, we're, we kind of have a yin-yang effect. While we have a lot of things in common and the same sense of humor, uh, we have really different personalities uh, that I think help each other instead of hinder each other. I think Dan's strength aside from casting is probably, I think he's got a great work ethic. I think he has a really good sense of humor. I think one of the things we bring uh, in GSL is not just analysis and play-by-play, -play, but we have a lot of fun and I think we're able to connect with our audience and I would only be able to do that with Dan. Like they love the game so much. They've been here since Brood War. They've been casting since they, they were players themselves. And then over time, I think they grew like incredible chemistry with each other. So they've been casting together for so many years now that they just work really well together. Like uh, Artosis is really knowledgeable of the game and Tasteless like helps new players get into the game and he's very entertaining for the fans. They have great banter at the start of the game. So I think just overall they they do everything they need to do as casters very well. Oh, they're pretty popular in the Western scene, I feel. Like everyone likes Artosis and Tasteless. Everyone always gets hyped when they cast. So I think they're really, really big in the West. They're popular because they have been Casting and playing and StarCraft 2 for so many years, right? Even back to Brood War, that's why they're so popular. It's been like, what, 20 years? No, no, 15 years, something like that, total. 실제로 얘기를 많이 해보면은 이 한국에 있는 StarCraft 2에 대한 혹은 StarCraft 2 e스포츠에 대한 문화를 해외에 많이 퍼트려야겠다는 생각을 스스로도 굉장히 많이 하고 있어요. 그리고 반대로 해외 팬들에 대한 여러 피드백들을 우리한테 전달해 주는 역할도 굉장히 많이 하고 있기 때문에 진짜로 게임을 좋아하고 StarCraft를 사랑하는 그 열정과 태도가 as commentators, I think Nick and Dan are complete pros. They are legends. I remember the first time I cast with Dan was that maybe eight years ago now. I was a newbie little scrublet no-name commentator in Australia, and it was one of those things that I was very nervous about, but he assured me in one of these beautiful, if you fall, I will catch you moments, that everything would be fine. And he was right, it was. It was my best cast up until that point. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that a really good commentator can really just make anyone look good. The first time I cast with Nick, or Tasteless, was maybe four or five years after I got to cast with Dan for the first time. And at the time, it was considered that every caster in StarCraft 2 was usually a play-by-play -play and a color commentator. And it was the first time that I ever had to cast with a play-by-play -play commentator. So I thought that we'd clash because our styles are so similar, but he's a total pro. It was so easy. It was like slipping into a warm bath. It was the easiest thing in the whole world. And to this day is one of my favorite people to co-cast with because it is just so comfortable. I think if you do anything in your life for over 10 years, it's pretty clear that you're very dedicated and very passionate about it. And I think that shows. Uh, I love the way they have been doing it. They have obviously evolved as well as commentators. At first it was a lot about the little details and then it became a little more about let's just have a great time, let's have a great show. Dan is always there with the facts and Nick is always there to bring some humor into the broadcast. 
Uh, it's honestly always been fun to watch them, it's been cool to learn from them as well, and it's definitely been a pleasure to work with them. Some of the foreign events, or even at the GSL vs. the World, I've always enjoyed it, and it's been really cool. So, that's about it. So this is the GSL Special Award of oh, 2011, okay, so almost nine years ago. But this is very sweet, the company gave this to Dan and me for our work. Dan has one at his house too. They gave us this for our work um, in broadcasting the global side of GSL. I, it makes sense that GSL has lasted a long time because StarCraft's a good game, and it gets better with, with time, it gets better with, with aging, kind of like wine. Um, but I am still surprised we managed to go this far. It's very cool. I'm very, very, very proud of what GSL's done. GSL really means so much to me. It's hard to put it into words. You know, it's kind of the thing that I did for the past 10 years. It's the thing that I've helped to build, that I've been a part of. Uh, you know, the people who work on GSL, they're like family in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, when I look back on this very long and still growing period of my life, uh, this will be the thing I think that really stands out, what I did professionally, was help make the GSL into what it is. I think there's a lot of parts of GSL that make it the best esports tournament of all time. I think for one, it's the players, it's also the history that it's been able to build. It's not a new game, it's very old now, so we really have a lot of good stories we can tell. Uh, I hope the caching that Dan and me bring is valuable. I think the music's excellent, I think the production is top tier, and I think our tournament has more personality than most other esports events. I think uh, GSL, uh, aside from being the most competitive tournament around, it has a certain regularity to it, which is really important in esports. It just it keeps going and keeps fresh and alive and ever rising. Uh, and it's also at this point, at 10 years, we have such a legacy, such a history with GSL that it feels like everything matters. We're building upon this giant mountain of results. GSL is the history of StarCraft II. GSL is about legacy.